Do we have the signature? Hi, uh, Professor Wilhelmina Maldes. I hope I got that right. And Dr. Yeah. Robin Choi. Hello, Hello, how are you? Uh, hi, how are you? I'm good. Thank you very much. Uh, we have about four. Uh, let's just wait for a few more students to maybe join us. Yep. Sure. Just give us uh, maybe another two minutes for students to come in. You Will you let us know when um, to share? Yes, for sure. Yeah, just looking at the participants list. Lovely. How are you? Good, good. Busy <laughs> uh, day. Sorry? It's a busy day for you. Yeah, very busy. It's a long day. Yeah. Long week as well. Yeah. Another, one, another fair tomorrow as well. So long day. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. I think we can start with quite a good number. Um, okay. So welcome, everyone. So we have with us Associate Professor Wilhelmina Maldes, um, who, in, who is a professor in audiology from University of Western Australia, as well as Dr. Robin Choi. A lecturer in audiology as well. So um, we'll pre they're presenting on a topic of exploring, explore where a career in clinical audiology can take you to today. So um, yeah, let's welcome our speakers. You can take it away. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. We start? Yes. Um, thank you very much for joining us. Um, my name is uh, Associate Professor Wilhelmina Mulders. I am a neuroscientist at the University of Western Australia in Perth. Um, I teach neuroscience, but I also coordinate the Masters of Clinical Audiology. And today we will tell you a little bit about the Masters of Clinical Audiology, where it can take you, what it entails, and a little bit also about Perth and the University of Western Australia. Thank you, Helmi. So my name is Dr. Robin Choi. I am a lecturer in audiology and I am one of the coordinators as well. I teach all the clinical units in the program. So uh, before we start, why isn't this moving? Oh. There we go. <laughs> so before we start, we wish to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land we're meeting on, the Wajat Noongar people. So uh, the University of Western Australia is located in its capital, uh, Perth. 
Uh, Perth is a lovely city. It's a vibrant city. Uh, it's, it's situated on the River Swan. Um, it is a, has a very strong economic status within Australia, uh, even though we had the COVID years and we are still here, we're still going through COVID. Um, it had strong economic growth. It has higher average wages than uh, the national average in Australia. So it's a really nice city to live in. Like Helmi said, Perth is a lovely city. So both Helmi and I are not from Perth, as you can tell, but we really uh, both enjoyed living here. It's very affordable to live here. So compared to other Australian capital cities, it has the lowest cost of living. And to make everything much better, it has, it's, it's in the same time zone as Singapore, which makes it easier for you to connect with your friends and family and on the go. And it's ranked the most, uh, well, the, uh, one of the most livable cities in the world and top 10 healthiest cities in the world and the sunniest capital city in Australia. So if you like beaches, if you like hiking, um, we've got all that here as well. So Perth is, a, is truly a lovely city. I came here 25 years ago. And so I joined the 37% of Western Australia that is born overseas. Um, so you find people here from, from all over the world, 190 countries, 270 languages are spoken here. And that also means we have a large international uh, students cohort in, in, in WA. So it's, it's makes for a very multicultural and vibrant city. Um, and like what Robin said, we have lovely beaches. There's lots of opportunity to play sports, restaurants, and, um, and to see lovely weird animals like you see the below in the screen, which is a quokka, which lives on an island just, be, just outside Perth. So here you can see the UWA campus. As you can see, the campus is in front of a lovely bay. So it overlooks the bay. It's around 15 minutes from the CBD area. And the campus itself is very big and very green. Within the campus, you have the five different colleges and you also have access to medical center as well. So, and, and cafes and um, gym and all these other, other amenities as well. You also have beach that is 10 minutes away from the campus as well, which, is, which makes it very, very central. So University of Western Australia was established about a little bit over 100 years ago and has since then uh, endured a very strong uh, reputation and academic uh, reputation and also a good, very good reputation for student experience. Uh, within all the universities in the world, it's ranked in the top 100 um, and it has very good uh, ratings on teaching quality, which we are happy out because we are teachers. Um, so five stars for teaching quality. Uh, we have also a lot of University of Western Australia has a very big network globally with industry partners and other universities all over the world and research centers. And in Western Australia, we are uh, not the only university, but we are the number one for graduate employability so the opportunities to get a job are highest when coming from our universities as compared to other universities in western australia so who are audiologists those of you who may um who have joined today may or may not know who audiologists are so we are health professionals who work in the prevention diagnosis and rehabilitation of people with hearing loss and or balance disorders so a lot of you may have um, family members who might have a hearing loss, who wear hearing aids, and basically audiologists, um, th that's part of the audiologist's job to ensure that people can hear and um, still have good quality of life. And most people enter the profession because they have strong sense of duty and they also want to help people. So what do we do? So we work in a variety of settings, mostly in clinical settings with patients, clients. Things like um, testing hearing and balance function of um, young children and uh, elderly. So we test anyone from neonates or newborn to uh, really old people, like you can see um, at the bottom. Uh, audiologists also prescribe and fit hearing aids and cochlear implants. Uh, cochlear implants are bion bionic devices that helps you hear better when your hearing um, is not um, treatable with hearing aids. And we, are, we also uh, provide lots of tools and counseling for hearing and balance. So not only we fit hearing aids, we also give patients tools to manage their hearing loss with their friends and family as well. And we work very closely with other health professionals, such as ear, nose and throat surgeons, speech pathologists, uh, psychologists, neuroscientists, et cetera, et cetera. 
But not all audiologists end up in a clinical setting. Some audiologists actually continue and they actually move into research and development. So research can happen at universities and research institutes, for instance, looking at the origin of hearing loss, looking at the connection between hearing loss and cognitive decline, so dementia. Um, but you can also, some audiologists that I know actually ended up with hearing device manufacturers. So they work with people that make hearing aids, that make cochlear implants. So there is a wide variety of uh, careers that we can prepare you for when you do a master's of clinical audiology. So then, of course, for you sitting there thinking, well, why should I care? Maybe that's what you're thinking. Um, but so you think, why is it important? Why is it interesting? Well, to point out some of the importance of audiologists is that hearing loss is the most prevalent, so, so the most common sensory impairment. And even more important is that when you get older, you get a bigger chance to get hearing loss. Yeah, so when we get older, everybody starts to lose their hearing a little bit. And in some people it's a little bit more and they need a little bit of help to actually be able to hear. So because we have a population worldwide that is getting older and older, uh, the World Health Organization predicts very rapid growth of hearing loss in society and therefore a very big increased need for audiologists due to these aging populations. But it's not only about older people in society, we also have, we now know that early intervention for children with hearing loss is, is very important. If you don't solve the hearing loss at a young age, children can have a delay with speech uh, and language acquisition that will cause delays in their, in their schooling, yeah, and because they can't keep up, and that, of course, then results eventually in children that don't have good job opportunities and don't have a good quality of life. So that is what audiologists are involved in as well. And on top of that, the career prospects are excellent. So we have a very strong track record of all graduates obtaining jobs within three months of graduating. And a lot of the graduates will obtain job six months before they even graduate. And on top of that, it's, it's a very versatile and very flexible field. So like I said before, you work in a huge variety of settings. So both in public hospitals or private clinics, you get to work with both adults and children. You could work as an educational audiologist at schools or um, working at the hospital only, or even you can even work as a noise management officer in a big corporate company as well. And like Helmi said, given that we have aging populations and increased need for early intervention for children with hearing loss, the employment of audiologists is predicted to grow 20% in the next 10 years. So how can you become an audiologist? <clears throat> well, one way to do this is come to U University of Western Australia and do a master's of clinical audiology. So within Australia, there's only six programs and we are one of them that are accredited by Audiology Australia. This course runs over two years, over four semesters. So in each semester, the way we teach audiology is that you have four to five weeks of clinical, of, of sorry, not clinical, of intensive teaching, which, uh, which involves lecturers, uh, practicals, laboratory classes. So you learn a lot of new things in those four to five weeks. Then we do a two week clinical intensive. Um, and that means you, you practice a lot of the skills you have been taught and of, of which you have been taught the theory uh, in those five weeks. So we go to schools, we go to childcare centers. Uh, you might test people in the workplace, you test each other just to get those skills up because that's important because straight away after that you get placed in clinics so even in the first semester so after seven weeks being enrolled in clinical audiology you enter the workforce and robin will talk a little bit more about that yes so like helmi said clinical placements are one of the um core um things that you do as part of the um uh, clinical audiology program so you start your clinical placement straight away, even within the first year, first semester, and you're expected to uh, go to a clinical placement throughout the entire two years worth of degree. Um, you do uh, one to two days a week um, for the first, um, no, for, um, for, for seven, seven to eight weeks every each semester. And during the midsummer break or winter break, you are expected to do a two week full time placement. So by the end of the program, you will obtain around 500 hours which put, put, um, place you really well equipped to enter the workforce straight away. And these clinics, you go to um, any, anywhere within Perth, WA, you can go to a rural clinic or remote areas. 
and in, um, there's a potential for overseas placements as well if a student um, requires to do so. So what do we do within audiology? What kind of things do you learn during the course? So there's some elements of that are basic science and that's the part actually that I teach. So it is uh, anatomy, physiology, pathophysiology. So how the hearing system looks like, how it functions, what, what happens when it goes wrong. Acoustics, so how sound behaves, because of course that is what we are interested in. Diagnostic audiology, which is something that Robin teaches. Rehabilitative audiology, so the the fitting of hearing aids and the likes. We also always do a research project in the second year, so you get some research experience, which makes you also eligible to continue in a PhD if you so want to. Uh, audiological practice management, so we also talk about how to run your own audiology clinic if you wish to do so, and we also teach speech, language and communication, because that's of course clearly linked to hearing. You want to hear, and what, what we are really interested in as humans is listening to speech. <laughs> Um, so that's yours. That's mine. Okay. So um, you might ask, so how do I get into a program? So um, if you are a high school, um, if you haven't graduated your high school yet, you need to go and do an undergraduate degree. And you need to have a pretty good um, um, average, mark. Um, average mark after your degree. So weighted average mark is essentially an average mark across your undergraduate degree. And this mark needs to be at least 65. Um, further information can be found on our website, but um, you can do any undergraduate degree. We don't discriminate against any degrees, but in general, we um, tell students it's probably better for you to do a science degree. So for instance, um, by, of a uh, Bachelor of Biomedical Sciences with a major in Anatomy and Human Biology or Neuroscience will place you um, well equipped to continue uh, the Master's of Clinical Audiology program. So if you are um, still at high school, um, students from A-levels, um, IB or Polytechnic can first do a UW bachelor's degree before applying to uh, do the clinical audiology. So um, for instance, um, if you wanted to do an undergraduate degree here at UWF first, you could do a Bachelor of Biomedical Sciences. And here are different um, cutoffs for uh, different uh, programs that you would have done in high school, but again, you could um, go to the UWA um, virtual booth and get further information um, should you wish to. So the very specific entry requirement, just to list them here uh, for you. So the academic requirements, as Robin said, you need a 65% uh, average. So that's your average mark, basically, that, that's how you can calculate it. Then for the English requirements, you need a IELTS test or with a minimum score of seven. That's a little bit higher than um, some other courses may ask you to do but that is of course because you will deal with people that are hard of hearing so we need to ensure that everybody's English is excellent. Um, for additional requirements we also when you apply for the course you also need to submit a one-page statement outlining why you want to be an audiologist so we know that you are keen to start. Uh, applications generally open in September and they close at the end of October. So before we finish up, I just want to um, let you know that UWA has what we call a Global Excellence Scholarship. And essentially, when you apply to study at UWA, if you're eligible, you'll be automatically considered for a scholarship. You can get up to um, 12,000 um, Australian dollars per year. And this depends on which undergraduate coursework degree or postgraduate coursework degree you're doing. So again, um, um, join us at the UWA um, virtual booth. There'll be a staff there who can give you more information on this as well. So um, thank you very much, guys, for um, listening in. Um, do make an appointment to uh, speak with the UWA staff at a virtual booth. And if you have any questions, um, always drop us a line. Thank you. Bye. 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 Yeah. Thank you.